Hi everyone, welcome back this week. Yeah, I have been exposed. Yes, in fact, I just received a message from the、um, Department of Health of Maryland, and they said, well, based on the cell phone signal proximity, they said I might be exposed to a person that tested COVID nineteen positive. And in fact, my school already emailed me a couple days ago saying that I've been exposed to someone tested positive during a school lunch party. Now, about twenty some of us took our mask off and were eating in a small room for about an hour or so.、Um, so definitely exposure. Unfortunately, the person tested positive was asymptomatic, and as far as I know, everybody in the room that day is still asymptomatic at this point. Well, because all of us are fully vaccinated, or we would have lost our job already. So currently, my school protocol, and so does the CDC, suggest exposed, fully vaccinated people who show no symptoms should get tested five to seven days after close contact. So I'll be getting a rapid test on the coming Monday. But that brings to a bigger issue I want to talk about today. So it is known that. Upper respiratory tract viral load in asymptomatic people was similar to those in symptomatic people, and study also showed people are most infectious on or before symptom onset. In a very recent study, researchers from Peking University in China reviewed 95 studies from around the world that have a total of 30 million individual data. They find out all those who tested positive, 0.25 percent had a SARS-CoV-2 infection and were asymptomatic during testing, and of those tested positive. Forty point five percent were asymptomatic. Now that means a lot of people could be asymptomatic and walking around in the community and possibly transmitting the virus. The issue of transmission could be even more serious now with the Omicron variant. Another preprint study that came out last week showed us in an in vitro study antibodies from people who received the Johnson and Johnson vaccine, the Russian Sputnik V vaccine, have completely failed to respond to the pseudo virus carrying the Omicron spike protein. Only one of the twelve samples who received the Chinese Sinopharm inactivated whole virus vaccine showed adequate neutralization. And that may be because the samples were from younger people. Now, Moderna dropped 33 times in this study. Pfizer dropped 44 times, and AstraZeneca dropped 36 times. But antibodies from vaccinated people with previous infections do appear to have the highest level of neutralization against the Omicron spike protein, according to this in vitro experiment result. But is the booster the answer to the issue of transmission? Former FDA officials and other experts continue to believe that booster is not the solution. CDC Director Dr. Valensky said in September that we will not boost our way out of this pandemic. Her statement remains true, especially when we are boosting with the current version of the vaccine. So, what could be the solution to stop the transmission? The short answer is the nasal vaccine, because giving the vaccine in the nasal cavity can stimulate a different type of antibody production called IgA, which is specific to secretion and to the mucosal membrane. The presence of IgA at the site of virus entry can stop the virus from progressing further. Dr. Iwasaki from Yale University just published a paper on December 10th using a mouse model of the influenza virus to confirm intranasal vaccine also induces IgA secretion in the bronchial alveola. Now the in vitro study from the University of Hong Kong also showed that Omicron replicated faster in the bronchus tissue. The two studies combined have given us strong evidence that nasal vaccine against the SARS-CoV-2 coronavirus may be our best bet to end this pandemic. 
So you're probably wondering, when are we going to get nasal vaccine against COVID-19? Now, there are currently several clinical studies that are going on around the world. Bharat Biotech from India is working on a nasal vaccine using a modified chimpanzee virus to deliver the spike protein. The vaccine has started phase 2-3 trials in August. Codagenex in the U.S., is working on a live attenuated or weakened nasal vaccine that showed to be safe in their phase 1 trial and is looking to move into phase 2-3 trials. The University of Hong Kong is in phase 1 clinical trial with their vaccine candidate. Now, their vaccine is a weakened live flu virus that is engineered to carry the SARS-CoV-2 spike protein. Back in the U.S., the NIH has repurposed the AstraZeneca's injectable vaccine into a nasal vaccine. It showed promising results in animal studies and is moving into phase 1 clinical trials. But I have not seen the current number one COVID vaccine producer, Pfizer, has made any move or has any activities in the area of nasal vaccine research. Now, Pfizer on Friday, December 17th, forecasted that the COVID-19 pandemic would not be behind us until 2024. Pfizer has the resource to develop nasal vaccine. Now, instead, they forecast or they predict we would still be in the pandemic for two to three more years. Meanwhile, they continue to sell their injectable vaccine that we know it is not able to generate IgA antibodies that can stop transmission. Do you see an ethical issue here? So while I'm waiting to be tested, I hope I'm not one of those asymptomatic positive cases. And that's all I want to share with you this week. And for my viewers who celebrate Christmas, I hope everyone can stay safe during holiday parties and gatherings and events. And I'm going to take a small break from this channel in the next couple of days to catch up with my family live. Maybe I'll do some Christmas vlogging in my other channel in case you are interested in watching. And I'll be back here in this channel next Sunday. Well, meanwhile, please stay safe and healthy and Thank you very much for watching. Merry Christmas. Happy Holiday. Bye.